We are live. What's up, nerds? Welcome back to another episode of the Aggressively Average Anglers podcast. Tonight, we are talking about kayak motors. One in particular that we've finally got our chance to get a chance to get our hands on and actually use. We've installed. We've put this now on two kayaks and used it. So we're excited to not only talk about this motor, but talk to the guy behind it. We've got Human from Bixby here. What's going on, brother? How are you doing? Good. Great. Great to be on the show, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely, man. This is uh, exciting for us to get to learn a lot more about a product like this. You know, there's like a lot of different kayak motors out there. This this market has like really been exploding lately. There's so many different ones right. that I've you've never heard of before. And all of a sudden, poof, it's like on my Instagram feed. And I'm like, what the heck is this? And how does it work? And I right. want to try it. Uh, but the the concept behind being able to propel your plastic flotation vessel is exciting. And uh, the fact that we've gotten a chance to try uh, your product out has been great. So yeah, we're going to we're going to grill you tonight. Are, are you ready to get grilled a little bit? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to say, no, you guys told me only easy That's questions good. now. Yeah. 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 If, if you guys check out Bixby Motors, if you haven't looked at them before, just go check out their site. Their the site's very intricate. They have mounting options for just about any vessel you can think of. And when you watch the install videos, this is the guy. This is the guy that's doing the installs. So he knows his stuff, and we're going to get into it with him tonight. So I'm excited for that. Uh, as for you guys in chat, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are happy to hang out with you again. This is, I mean, that's the highlight of our week. This is a lot of what we look forward to in in terms of having this channel in the first place also did you guys know that this is episode 70 of the triple a podcast paul did you know that uh cool. i know because i know I you know that because you, so. you wrote the show note <laughs> <laughs> but i mean dude i don't even think about that 70 episodes in this is the second podcast the last one got up close to 120 so i mean we're well into our like over 200 no i thought we were at like i think like I think we're way think it was higher. Money. Yeah, I think it was like in the 200s. Mm. Likely story. I don't know, man. Oh, yeah, that sounds familiar. I don't know. Time flies when you're talking to a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got a lot of stuff to get into tonight. So we're just going to jump right in with the Q of the D. What do you say, Paul? All right. So somebody somebody asked me this question. This is just a fun question. It's like a, our little icebreaker, usually uh, yep. fishing related, usually, <laughs> or TV related. Yep. All right. So we are kayak fishermen. Mm -hmm. Most kayaks, most fishing kayaks are in like the 10 to, we'll say, 13 foot range, 10, 12 foot range, somewhere in there. So my question is, if you, if your kayak was going to get modified and you have two options, it's either going to now be 17 feet long or it's going to be eight feet long. And that's, those are your only options, 17 feet or eight feet. Which, which length would you, uh, which length would you select? This is a question for me. It's a question for everybody. Yeah, I'm, kinda, I, I'm kind of looking at Jeff because I want to know what Jeff would pick, <laughs> frankly. I think you know what I would pick. I'm not picking a kayak that's like two <laughs> feet longer than me. <laughs> like, okay, so Jeff's no. insinuating he's going to go with a 17. Foot so a 17 foot kayak, your maneuverability yeah. is 0. 0.0. Trash. Yep. And uh, you need two trailers to I'm okay all with that. Over. Oh, you're good. You're good. I'm, good with, I'm good with it. All right. 17, 17 all day. footer. Got it. Who man, where you gonna need like nine Bixby's <laughs> along the way? That's that's almost twice the length, dude. I would get the 17, cut it in half, and then the times when you need to go out <laughs> with a short kayak, I would just go in the short kayak. Hey, I'm very good at waterproofing stuff, so I'll find a seal for it and mm -hmm. I'll get mm -hmm. like you know, and like, there are kayaks like that. There's actually a company yeah. that, that makes that that's modular so true, kayak. Actually. Yeah, yeah, get some extra Tupperware, cut off the ends, get some hot glue, and Done, man. I think the all you really need is that. Remember the flex seal guy where he like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Screen yeah. Door and made there you go. I think that's all you really need is that guy. Exactly. Well, flex seal goes a long way, man. That's all we're saying. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Seventeen. I was trying to think about like how to explain how big a seventeen foot kayak is. That is a four person kayak. It's, it's a three Hobie feet. tandem island. That's yeah, it, pretty much it already island. exists. <laughs> The Hobie, yeah. the the tandem yeah. pro <laughs> angler, the tandem pro angler is seventeen feet, Paul. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, that's oh it. That's right. Yeah, it's pro angler seventeen. Yeah. Yep. So you're yeah. just like, well, that's absurd. No, it already. So we need exists. to go. Well, leave it to Hobie. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The barge. Yeah. <laughs> that's wild. All right. Well, so we know you know kayaks. So the question is, are you, uh, who man, are you an angler? Do you fish, or are you like strictly a I pleasure don't. cruiser? No. no. 
No, I, I eat fish. Um, well, that's good. But, that's very uh, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I'm not. I'm not an expert fisherman no, by by any means. If all if I'm out and somebody's fishing, I'll I'll fish along. I've gone out on some fishing trips. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm not. A, yeah, I'm not a fisherman. But, um, so so what is your ba- fisherman for sure? So what is your background and how'd you get involved with Bixby? Uh, my background is actually biology. So I studied biology and then, um, never, yeah, never practiced. Um, and I ended up uh, running some language schools for, for years and years, um, up in Canada. And then we also had a school in Florida. Uh, then we sort of exited all of that, uh, 2014. Um, and I was always very mechanically sort of inclined. Um, that's it. That's what I even did in school. Even in biology, I would build devices and stuff. Um, so yeah. I wanted to do something that was more hands-on, more building, more technology, and so on. Um, and I was playing with drones and and uh, skateboards and sort of like that technology. Yeah, yeah, the lithium batteries. The, yeah. I was retired, remember, right? So I was for like a few months. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh yeah. Um, yeah. So so I was just playing around, and then I was also sailing a little bit in my little hobby tandem island. Um, right. Speaking That's the first experience. thing I bought. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I know it's thing 17 for it or 17 something. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then I got sort of tinkering and I wanted to do something. And I, and I felt like no one was really using that technology of that lithium batteries and those electric, those brushless motors and controllers and stuff uh, in water. So I thought that would be a good combination. So, um, and it was after also a trip of sort of, we went out and my buddy on that angler pro and, or pro angler, whatever. Um, yeah. And we got stuck out there and, you know, we wanted to put a motor on that thing, and there really wasn't anything at that point. Um, Torquedo made that motor uh, that would go into the fin box. Uh, mm-hmm. It was really expensive, um, and it was hard to get at that point. There weren't many shops that carried it. And the whole idea of motorizing kayak wasn't really. Um, it was like the, the you know initial days of motorizing bicycles. We were like, oh, you can't motorize the kayak. Um, yeah. So we, I just sort of decided, hey, we'll just we'll do this ourselves. Like if this thing can, um, if this thing can propel a bicycle, right, this should, up a hill should be able to push a kayak on flat water. So, um, so yeah, so it got going from there and hired a couple of people and got them working on on the prototype, and then it just slowly uh, got on Kickstarter, um, launched the first products. Uh, it was a motor that attached to various adapters for kayaks and paddle boards. I think initially we released five adapters at the same time when we when we uh, oh, wow. released. That's yeah. more than like so anybody else. To... Everyone else was like, "Here's your figure brand. it out. Good luck." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's what it is. So we released, yeah, we released with five adapters right off the bat. I think uh, yeah. plus uh, one adapter that was an actual battery, handheld battery, and then you could use it as a snorkel scuba diving device. Um, so that yeah, that back. first motor. What a vehicle, man! What? That's yeah, sick. so if you look it up, it'll probably you'll probably see pictures of it online. We discontinued that years ago um, because we were just getting torn into so many different directions. We were in the kayaking, we were in yeah. the kayak fishing, and then we were not going to snorkeling and scuba diving shows, and it was just too much. So, um, so we sort of abandoned that that snorkel um, scuba version of it uh, in favor of the kayak uh, and boats, basically. Yeah, uh, and then we just kept building adapters and kept improving the product. So that yeah, that's that's where we started. So that's a that's a lot of stuff going in. So what what year did you guys essentially start? So 2014 was sort of the the idea year, um, but it did take us about sort of three years to really bring a product to to market, like to actually build something that you could use and not um, you know not have to DIY stuff, sort of, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And what, yeah, what was so, the first model, the first motor? Because you're out, you got the K1 iteration going out right now. That's what we have. Right. So what yeah, was the, the yeah. first one? So the J, the, uh, the J1, first one, J2? The, the first one didn't have a name, to be honest. Ah. Um, <laughs> it was just... Oh, the old no-namer. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then when we had a major iteration, we're like, oh, we need a name for these things. So then we can say... <laughs> The next one, one and right? two and three um, and yeah i think like you know like the first gopro didn't wasn't gopro one right it was just yeah gopro right so GoPro. Yeah. um yeah so so yeah so then so then when we made the first major iteration uh and that was when we walked away from the swim and, and snorkel uh market 
Um, we So the motor was very plug and play. So you would be able to plug it in. But that plugging ability gave us a lot of headaches because you had to be good at mating that connector. And if you didn't mm. mate the connector, you'd have all kinds of problems. Um, so that, that, that was always an Achilles heel for us with that connector. And the reason we had it there was so we can have the swim version of the product. And so when we moved away from that, we no longer needed that, that clicking ability. So we were able to just hardwire the motor right to the battery. And that was mm. a major iteration. And thus, you know, J2. And then we started calling the other one J1. Um, yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then now we're on to K1, uh, which is a major iteration in the sense that we didn't just make small modifications. Uh, we, we changed the whole way the motor is built. Uh, the motor is all aluminum now. So, you know, heat dissipation and all of that is much more efficient. The electronics are different. Um, yeah. So that's, that's now it's a K1. It is gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. Compared yeah, the, to the blue adapters are really cool too. I like it's them. gorgeous. <laughs> so yeah. here's what I'm curious about uh, on the adapters. You guys have like a million of them on the site. Who's mm -hmm. in, who's engineering those? Is that you? Are you going? Are you figuring out the solution to like all these different models mm -hmm. of kayaks? Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean the adapters yeah. themselves? Yeah. Yep. So the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So the adapters. I'm yeah. I, my sort of initial belief from the very first day was like, we need to build, like, we need to build something that you get out of the box and you should be able to just put it on your thing, like right away, right? Like yeah. there shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to spend a weekend in your garage. Right. Right. Um, so that was, that's always been a very heavy focus. Um, and that's, yeah, that's my, my sort of drive for sure of, of, you know, just keeping in touch with all the kayak manufacturers and, and keeping our eyes and ears open. You know, we check the owner's group all the time. You know, we, mm. we watch what people do. People are so much smart. There's so many smarter people out there than us. So, you know, they, they come up with the, the coolest sort of uh, engineering, whatever they with call it. With a 3D printing now. Duct tape engineering. They're like, oh, 3D printing, I yeah, would like to just yeah. go ahead and make this. I can make whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> Throw a couple action so, figures sure. in there and... So yeah, we watch what people do. Sort of, we we sort of borrow some ideas from our uh, our users, which they're awesome and they're you know they, yeah. they keep feeding us stuff. We can't always do everything. Obviously, there are limitations to when you build something on your three D printer as opposed to when you go into mass production, right? So you can't you can't always do everything. We can't always do every adapter because some of them don't sell enough kayaks for us to justify. Sure. Um, but yeah, that's a big passion of ours. And then we uh, our mechanical engineer Jeff um he's he's really nifty at coming up Man, so him and i work really really well <laughs> really really well together and we just um you know we like we just come up like i'll, I'll say hey we need to do it like this and he'll just yeah. come up with this like amazing little mechanism of making something move or whatever um and we work well and then that's that's a big focus for us so that's a really really big focus and then we have people like uh, john and yak gadget you know he helps us out a lot um like you know he's really good with he's uh, amazing. anything starboard yeah like anything mm -hmm. starboard man like it's like if you call john today and said dude my house burned down he'd be like i'll be there i'll make you a house out of starboard don't worry <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, let me go print one up for you <laughs> three yeah, house. House. it's a thing we actually yeah. tried so, no, to, we actually, really we've been trying to bother him i actually owe him a phone call we went back and forth on email because i want to get some of the yak gadget stuff uh to showcase yeah. to people yeah. Um, specifically the crate. I think the his idea insane. of how the uh, how a crate should work like, is so different angles, than most people. Boxes, it, yeah. like people need to see yeah. that because it's it's pretty friggin' sweet. So to yeah. to clue chat it's in, clever guess. if you guys haven't seen this, go check out Yak Gadget. They have a crate that's just it's just interesting. Just go look at it and let, let us know what you guys think about it as well. Uh, but yeah, we might hit them up and see if we can get our hands on one of those. So yeah, this is such a hang on. I gotta this comment right here this is such a, a funny comment that comes up when you start dabbling in the realm of motors people are like ah it's not a kayak anymore ah you don't need a motor anymore like ah you know yeah. just paddle right and like listen man i totally get it there's and, and for me uh i love we have a crescent sholey we each do and uh that is the kayak that gets like no mods for me like we hit the river it's like just a bare bones kayak we paddle and that is it's really nice to just be in stealth mode, you know, in nature, just enjoying the moment. There's no graphs on there, no sure. sonar, none of that. <clears throat> so I respect that. And at the same time, like 
bro. Oh, well, there's Having another a... comment. <clears throat> yeah. Sly Fox goes, man, I don't want to paddle my Jackson big rig a <laughs> mile or more there. one way when I have my motor. So I, I, there it I, is. I mean, there's, there's two sides to every coin, right? Um, <laughs> This is a topic that's pretty polarizing. It's not nearly as polarizing as forward-facing sonar, but it's pretty polarizing where people are like, ah, as soon as you put a motor on that, you know, it's it's no longer a kayak. To us, the, the right. Bixby, and I'm interested on your take on this, we we totally view the, the Bixby in the motor market as like a completely different value proposition, which is why, you know, we wanted to hook up with you guys, test it out, and we we're putting it on two kayaks. We've got it on two kayaks, right? right now mm -hmm. versus like yeah. the newport uh or torquedo with like the the newport has the nk 180 300 they're dropping a new one on april 3rd uh just an updated model but that's like much faster uh built to go faster and it's that rear mount right. only kind of situation or like an xi3 from motor guide on the front so i got bow mounted i got gps i got the old town autopilot you know there's all these different like and they all have their own kind of individual value prop so are, are right. we right on the money with that like what what was your intention going to market with the bixby like what do you how are you how do you separate yourself or differentiate in yeah. the market right so you got to remember when we were doing this like really nobody else was doing this right like mm -hmm. nobody was powering kayaks uh in, yeah. in 2014 when we started doing this right yeah. So my, my whole idea from the very beginning was like, you're in a kayak and back then the kayaks weren't this big. So the comment of like, I can paddle my 17 foot, it's very true because the kayak companies are building to motors now, right? Uh, they're building with the intention that, Hey, we're going to build this thing. You're going to paddle it sometimes maybe, but you got to put a motor on this thing. It's way too big, right? The yeah. kayak weighs like 130 pounds by the time you put your stuff on it. Easy. So, you know, when we started, my whole thought process was if you want to motorize you to carry in one arm under your sort of arm and drop it in your car, whatever you put on it, it's got to be super light, first of all, right? Right. Um, you got to remember all the other motors that are out there and to, that are made like, the, you know, Newport Vessel, they're, they're not really, now they're kind of adapted to kayaks, but yeah. they were made to move bigger boats. They weren't made to move kayaks. That's why they have this big propeller spinning in the back and stuff there. So we were like very specific with, you know, this thing's gotta be about 10 pounds. If it's any more than that, that's ridiculous because you, you're not gonna be able to carry it. Now I say that with a 25 pound battery on the market on our website, because right. I realize now people have much bigger boats, they have much bigger kayaks and so, right? Um, but, you know, we saw this as sort of like, it's an assist in a way, you know, you're putting this on your kayak, you can put it on any kayak. Um, it gets you out there. Uh, you know, people compare it to to like e-bikes or whatever. It's like I gotta go bike. Yes. When you, yeah, but there are a couple of differences. Like when you e-bike, you know where you're going and you know what your road is gonna be like. When you kayak, you might get wind and current and stuff, yeah, and then now you're yeah. stuck. Yeah. yeah. So A to B is not the same as B to A, right? Necessarily. No, it's A to um, W. Back to B. <laughs> right. Forgot X, my Z. Classes, back to A. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So so our thought was like, if you've got like a ten pound rig that you can just throw on a kayak, you can put it in a little backpack. Mm -hmm. uh, it's light. It's waterproof. You don't have to mess with it, and so on. That's it. That's a good value proposition, right? That's something that lots of people can use. You know, if you're out there on a 300 pound kayak and your your sole purpose is to be on a tournament where you're catching set certain size fish or whatever then yeah you're going to need something different right um but your recreational user even your sort of semi-amateur um fishing guy he just needs a little <laughs> more assistance right yeah he just needs a little little push Crazy. sometimes a little wind right yeah so yeah no, that's so that's, that's really uh, the value proposition, and then just the simplicity, yeah. right? Quick, simple, easy, affordable. It is so simple, right? it really is. And the it, other installs that they're not even in the same galaxy. Well, yeah. So, I mean, what I liked about the install was that you guys had the card with the QR code in there, so it just takes me right to your videos. You got a video on everything. Uh, videos are pretty easy to follow. Um, I ran yeah. into like one hiccup with my rudder lines, but that's like the kayak's fault. It has nothing to do with you guys. Uh, just like those pre-tapped um lines for rudder steering right on yeah. 
the older old town model that I have. It's the it's the big water 132. It's it's new, but it's not like it's the predator right. model. It's not changed right, right. since then. But uh, I wanted to jump back to a point that you brought up, which was the, uh, the the e-bike. And I totally agree. Like it is kind of, but not really. But when you're in like a pedal kayak, like we put it on, Paul has the Old Town Pedal 106. When you put it on right. that, and you just let the motor do its job, right? You can go a certain right. speed. But when you pedal and let the motor do its job, like it's, right. it, you can move pretty swiftly. We got up to like what, six, six, six. five? I had six, six. Yeah. And it's not yeah, like it wasn't bigger windy. Packs for sure. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So with that one, like it's not even really built for speed. It's stability. It's a fishing. No, it's a, yeah. It's yeah. a wide fishing yeah. kayak. It's but, not like yeah. a, a little. Yeah. Slick, I, I think I can get rocket. my big water can go faster just because it's a uh, narrower build and it's, it's built for more speed, but like with VSL, that, right. yeah, with that one Oh six though, thing. we were still getting six miles an hour, but when you pedal, it's like, it was like the E pedal assist. Which reminded yeah. me, we've been in the old town e pedal. We use uh, we use yep. it. At yeah, I have as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it was it was similar to that to me because like the pedal was easy, but it would right. give you enough extra speed. It was kind of a nice. Assist. That's right. The pedaling is much easier, right? It's kind of yeah. like it's like biking, sort of with the wind, right? You're kind of getting yep. that that bit of a push, right? So it feels really yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So I thought that was because you're also sort of because you're also sort of feeding the motor, right? Because yep. you're moving everything and then the motor is doing a little bit better. So you can actually be on a really low speed. Mm -hmm. um, and if you pedal or paddle just a bit, you will go forever. Like you'll go forever on one battery. That's the other thing so, too. Yeah. And I would say yeah. <clears throat> that it's really nice when, because someone was talking about like, well, just paddle. Look, paddling is great, but I'll tell you as an angler, catching a fish with a paddle in your lap and a net in your left hand and a cell phone, you don't want to fall out of your pocket is one of the can be one of the especially if you're in the river is probably the most frustrating thing on the face of this planet sure um yeah. and i would say when you're trying to eat some lunch in between spots and you're still pedaling and you're like out of breath eating <laughs> it's actually really really nice to just be like beep, 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 and then have the big yeah. speed just be like yeah, yeah you handle this part i'll see you in five minutes when i'm done eating and then i'll click it back off or i'll start pedaling at that point <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i love it um yeah so I, I mean, i'm seeing some questions in chat and we got more questions for you but i'll throw a couple of these from chat just at you real quick yeah go for it you're better at this i'm not keeping up so <laughs> <laughs> it's all good so what, what this is a common one right like you guys have a proprietary battery that's yep. specifically yep. you got to plug it into that one is yeah. it possible to mod it where like you didn't need to use that no like, could uh, okay. So yeah, the short answer is like no, and then mm -hmm. the, the long answer is no. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the reason. <laughs> cool. Uh, so the reason the reason we don't do that is um, just oh. as arrogantly as Apple says it, right? We sure. want to be able to control the experience, right? um and because there are so many batteries out there um and yeah. there are so many people who think they're so good at understanding all of it um the moment you open that door uh you're inviting all kinds of uh things into the room right sure. and it just becomes like all right well now i've got I've, i put this on the motor now it's doing this, or now it's not going as fast as you said it would. Now it's not doing blah, blah, blah. Fire. I burned something out. I didn't know. Yeah. So then, you know, and we, one of the things we did when we were designing the product, right? So we mm. started in, in many ways, places where nobody had done before, right? So the, like, you know, we had a, we didn't want a propeller. So we're like, all right, we've got to yeah. do an impeller. But nobody had done an impeller in that size, right? And we wanted to do reverse. So we couldn't, you can't do reverse with an impeller. Uh, if you've seen in jet skis, like you got to put a thing. So now we have a hybrid, right? So we have a hybrid impeller propeller. So, um, so, you know, so we were losing certain efficiencies that we had to make up for then by doing other design things. And then therefore we had to really control how the motor runs, the speeds, mm -hmm. how much power is going into it and, and all of that. So then we could take a small battery and make it last like an hour and a half. So in order for us to do that in a package, so you could have a tiny two pound motor and run it for 11 hours on a small battery, we had to be in charge of everything, right? 
Um, so yeah. you get that package, right? So we didn't want to open it up. So that that's really the reason why. Um, and, and then we try to keep the batteries competitive, right? So when we sell a $600 sure. battery, it's not that far away from you buying a lithium pack at about the same power output, except now you're getting one that's waterproof, it floats, it's got a remote, you don't have to got do any kill of that switch on it. stuff. Got sure. the kill switch on it, yeah, all of that um, sort of ready to go in a box, right? Uh, so yeah, it's, you know, 100 bucks more, but and you're getting you know a lot of value for it's that hundred loss. So it's a, it looks really good. And the other thing so, too is like yeah, it's so weight we, appropriate. Imagine how yeah. big like if you threw like a giant battery on there, all of a sudden your your nice little comfortable right. Neato Bixby is mm-hmm. in a backpack is now a I have three carts and a deadlift in front of me. Right. So I mean, right. like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. obviously, it's your guys' product. You guys reserve the right to do that 100. percent If uh, I mm-hmm. saw this this comment here, Craig said he saw a video on how to do it. It's like if, if homie wants to do it in his basement, like avoid the warranty and make it work. Cool, whatever. You're you're yeah. giving yeah. valid reasons why you maybe shouldn't consider that, but could it be done? You can hack anything, guys. So sure, you can whatever. hack anything. <laughs> so Dude, I've got a lithium pack and pa- hacked it to my handheld vacuum cleaner that <laughs> but i'm not going to call black and decker and say hey uh at a garage is this cool <laughs> something's yeah. wrong with your product yeah it's exploded yeah. i don't it's i don't definitely get it. not this <laughs> yeah so oh. uh, yeah exactly so Interesting. so and you know i just see a guy that hang on because he mentioned apple as an example no offense but i'm a samsung guy and i get that and there are lots of people out there who are diyers yeah. and they want to do yeah. their own thing and it's super totally. cool we you know we love those guys. We're, we're in touch with them all the time. They're our inspiration, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you want something out of a box, plug and play, easy to use, no muss, no fuss, whatever, then, you know, that's that's where we've sort of driven for. So, And that's the biggest um, difference okay. between, like, yeah. the Bixby and some of the other stuff. And so when Jeff and I were kind of planning out, you know, how we were looking at using motors and how we were going to make some of the videos we were making and we were really thinking about it, we kind of all had them on the same yeah. level and then we started looking at like the weight differentials and then we started looking at the price differentials and then we started seeing even just in the marketing like how the products are marketed um mm-hmm. and it really actually became pretty obvious that the the bixby was like owns a segment that of like the smaller lighter faster but like extremely convenient and very affordable yeah. versus the rest of the market is very much more like inboard outboard basically where you're right. kind of buying a, an inboard outboard where you're like yeah i got a merc you know whatever but it's actually just a, a newport whatever right versus the bixby would be right. like a um you know kind of kind of actually ends up being the diy option where you're like i put it on whatever i need to and like it works however i'm going to need it to work and i'm not going to right. be going 15 miles today with you know mm-hmm. all my electronics my best friend and all my stuff um but right. If I'm going somewhere, maybe on kayak one or kayak two, um, and I just uh, I want to go across the lake and I want this to be either easier, faster, or both, all of a sudden, you know, boom, you're in business and for a half the price. So I, I just got this question twice now, Human, so I can't oh, ignore sure. it. Uh, people are asking about spot lock. Is that like on the radar? Mm-hmm. It is. Are you nodding yes? Right now? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're always <laughs> sure. Stuff, so. Yeah, that's, right. that's a more difficult one. So yeah, we yeah. you know we're working on it uh, at some point. But yeah, yeah, that's definitely in in, in the radar. And it, and and oh man, actually, cool. I can only say so much, I suppose. Um, I mean, there's the nobody series. really on this show. Nobody's Who listening. Are we <laughs> everybody cover your ears. La la la. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that's that's something that's definitely on our radar. But we we want to do it in in a kind of a different way. So then, cool. So then you don't have. So you can sort of upgrade to that, if you will. That's all I'll say. Oh, oh so. the upgrade ability would be nice. If you didn't have to like buy yeah. it right away, you right. could just... That is the exact opposite yeah. of everyone else. Everyone else like, oh, it'd be dope if you could upgrade it. Instead, here's what we'll do. We'll launch buy a new model. Thing. We'll raise the price $2,000. And yeah. you can have this, yeah. take it or leave it. Good luck, losers. Like, like... <laughs> Right, right. Oh, so, and then, yeah, so I mean, from our perspective, it would be really cool if... Um, if you could have, you know, you could get into our product for just over a thousand, but then mm-hmm. if you wanted to add stuff to it, then then you could, right? That would be awesome. so. That's that's what we're trying to get to get to, hopefully. 
So, so I, I, yeah, I like the idea of that a lot. So that's really cool to hear. And then just for, for chat as well, like I want everybody aware, we're testing when Paul was saying, how are we going to approach these, the motors? We're testing two this year, at least. We were trying to test four, but it didn't work out with two of them. So obviously we got the big speed. That's probably going to live on the Old Town Pedal 106 of uh, Paul's. And then right now it's it's on my big water because I'm using the foot pedal steering, which I'm stoked about. That thing, that is right. awesome. I, I, we'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, so I do like that a lot. And then we're going to be testing new ports as well. So our thought was like, these are really two different, completely different types of motors. And we see different value propositions for each. So we're going to rig them out. We're going to test them for the season and like, you know, give some feedback on that. And so we even, we even yeah. had the same realization with the XI3 in the front. It was kind of like, Oh, and I'm getting oh, that, that would too. Be, it, it would so be three. like, oh, so we will have that as well. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, Jeff and I were talking about that too. And I told him I was like, "You're not, you're not using them, and you're not using any, any one of these in the same way. I'm not using the Bixby yeah. the same as I'm using the Newport, and I'm not using the XI3 right. the same right. as either of those. Because when I get it with the XI3, it's not about going further. Like, yes, I can, but that's not you really can. what right. it is. What it is is hands free spot lock fishing. I that's what that right. is. That's right. right. I get to my spot now. It's valuable, versus the new port is like I live on Lake Saint Clair Ripping. or what, and I have to rip yeah. for 20, 30, 40 yeah. minutes. It's, I'm just getting to the spot, and then I'm probably using my paddles for most of that. The Bixby is like somewhere in between, where it's like I, I, I'm, I'm pond hopping. I, I don't want to have a whole freaking setup. I, but it would be cool to go across this, you know, 300 acre lake. And just go fish the other right. side. But also when I'm there, because it's not a lot of battery and because it's such a small unit, and if you're on a smaller kayak, all of a sudden it's kind of does what the XI3 does, where it's like, oh, I've got the remote. I'm going to just kind of steer over here using this, and maybe I won't touch my pedals all day. So right. yeah. it was. we were like the, these, I think, at least in our heads, we had them all kind of overlapping. I think they overlap a lot less than what people think, like a lot less. Yeah, and I mean, in some ways, but then at some point, not everyone's going to have every motor. So you're gonna you're right. gonna want to yeah. get something that's mostly going to serve what you're doing and your yeah. purpose, right? So, um, oh but, yeah. yeah, good question just came through, uh, and we, I, I, to be honest, I can't answer it because we haven't had the situation yet. The question was, uh, how does it do with like seaweed? Yeah. Um, you know, does it cut through? Or does it get clogged? Like, what's the? How does that work? Yeah, so seaweed is the worst, right? Seaweed because seaweed yeah. just gets into everything, right? Um, and we have seaweed, lots of seaweed here, so we're mm -hmm. well familiar with seaweed. Um, so seaweed, you, you, what you have to do is we have a finer grill that you can buy and put on the motor. Um, it drops your your efficiency and your speed a little bit, um, so we don't we don't put that on as a default. Um, and a lot of people don't need it, so we just sort of sell it as an accessory. But you can put a little grill on the back of the motor that gets rid of about 75% of the seaweed. Um, but then you also kind of have to learn, like if you're going into seaweed, turn the motor off. Like you can go mm -hmm. into seaweed with the motor, but just have it off for a second. Because mm -hmm. when you have it on, it's sucking in like 140 gallons of water from all around it. So whatever is around your <laughs> kayak is going to end up is going to end up in that hole, right? Um, but if you turn it off, because it's grass and then you just come out the other side so so you know i used to get super frustrated myself um then yeah. i learned no there's like a bit of a learning curve to it so you get out there and you just keep an eye out if you're going through a big patch and then if you even if you get into it if you just stop the motor right away put it in reverse most of it shoots back out right, right. um it's once you get it all wrapped around and now it's in there you keep trying to run it and then it's going to get wrapped around and, and really make a mess right um then you got to carry some forceps and make sure you yank it out but uh yeah. but yeah, we just it, it's there it's, it is what it is so yeah I, I like the the learning cur curve point on that and that's why like the remote has the stop button like the instance you don't have to slow it down to turn it off you just hit yeah. the stop button and yeah. you're good so i like that i also yeah. had this this goes with one of the questions that i had uh, so I rigged this up in my Big Water 132, and just because mm -hmm. of like where the battery's at, it's on your new rudder, which we should probably talk about tonight. So it's on the new rudder. Right. The power cord's not long enough for me to put the battery where I want it to go. So what Craig's mm -hmm. asking here is like, is there an extension on that power cord? And if so, does is there any loss in power uh, yeah. output to the battery? Yeah. So there is. So there is. There was two two uh, extension 
cable lifts, I think four and a half and nine feet. So four and a half is if you want to get it under your seat uh, in a big kayak. Mm -hmm. And then nine is if you want to have the battery right up in the front. Um, and yeah, and then you do lose some efficiency for sure. So I think you lose mm -hmm. about 1% efficiency or something for every foot of cable, roughly. So okay. the motor comes already with a six foot cable. So that's where you're at. So mm -hmm. every foot you add, you're losing about 1%. Um, but that's mostly sort of at the higher speeds anyway. Um, so if you're just trolling around, which is what most people do is just mid speeds, yeah. um, that you won't really notice much, but you do, there is always, you know, whenever you add cable, you're going to lose a little bit of efficiency. So, um, but yeah, got it. Yeah, so that's the interesting. Yeah. About. It kind of sits like right at the way back of my boat and like there's bungees, tie downs. You can break it out. You can do something with it if you want to. The only issue I ran into is if the kill switch, the magnetic kill switch gets bumped, right? Like if I'm moving around, yeah, and it bumps it off, then you get that error code. So it goes beep, 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 yeah. and it's doesn't run uh so i had to like yeah. reach it back and i'm like oh bro so i ended up like just putting yeah. it in my kayak crate that way i could reach it more easily had no issues the rest of the day so i could see benefit yeah. of i'll take the one percent uh loss per foot for that if it means i've got the battery closer and I can yeah yeah exactly so it depends what you're doing right if for mm -hmm. most people a percent of foot is not a big deal right um and that kill switch yeah i've seen people do all kinds of creative stuff with the kill switch to make it stay a bit better They'll put Velcro on both sides of it um, and they'll stick a little bit better. Um, I usually run it through a bungee before I put it on. So you have to pull it a bit harder because uh, if you fall off, you're going to pull it really hard anyway. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome definitely an option. question. Yeah, no, that was one of the things that stood out to me. We got another one I was going to ask you about. That's uh, an issue we mm. had on Paul's boat. I want to get to that for real quick. I uh, just want to welcome our new member, Swithia Pang is what I'm going with on the pronunciation here. I think that's close, Paul. What do you think? Did I nail it? I think you're good. Better than all average right. for you. Yeah. All right. Let's go. So welcome to the Burly Bunch Elite. That's awesome. All right. So here's the ish that I need us to talk about here, Human. So we've got mm -hmm. the uh, offset. Now, granted, we could unoffset this. Like we could put a plate to fix this thing. But if you know mm -hmm. the Old Town Pedal 106, they put the power plate, uh, the power pole plate adapter. Off to the side, yeah. Offset, right? Yeah. So when you use the, yeah. the power pole adapter that you guys have, it ends right. up just kicking out to the side, right? Being a little you, quicker, that's right, yeah. Yep, so you can adjust the motor and it's fine and we use it all day and it was, you know, it worked. The issue is when you retract it, right? So when we pull that motor up uh, right, with, right. with the rope, right? And then when we deploy it, the issue was that it doesn't want to like go back into the cradle, into that little yeah. lock. Yeah. Is that like a common issue? Does it really just need to be straight and then it's, that solves that problem? It, yeah, obviously it's better if it's straight, right? But if you're on an angle, um yeah it's gonna yep. be a little bit harder to do that right and that's I think that's the only kayak i know of that does that or there are a couple other i think um crescent kayaks have a couple of sideways uh uh plates on them but then they have like yeah. nine of them or something so like you can, it's like there's so many options so they, they made issue, a but. they made a plate though like so crescent's one of the crescent does it bonafide does it like just a few i think wilderness systems does it a few companies right. were smart about this and they made a giant mounting plate that you can just put on yeah. the back. I wish yeah. every company did that, first of all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that helps a lot. The one issue with Crescent is they only make it for a few of their models. They don't make it for every model, which is dumb. That's right. But hopefully yeah. they update that at some point. But yeah, having that plate oh. back there so you can just manipulate and do whatever you want, that's way better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the offset on this one. So we're pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Navarre uh, who makes a lot of aftermarket old town yeah, accessories. That's right. yep. I'm pretty sure they make one. We we tried to get it from him. I think we ordered the wrong plate. So it's it's on us. We'll figure it out. We'll yeah. adjust it. But yeah, that was something that yeah. we ran into. It just, it will not go back down. So if you're like, that's right. you hit shallow water, you got to pull that motor up. You got to like walk back there and put it back down before you hit the deeper. You can, down. so you can use the back of your paddle. Usually what I'll do is just grab oh. the back of the paddle. You put the motor in forward and just give it a quick yeah. nudge and it'll go back in. Yeah. Yeah, Fair but enough. yeah, I mean, that's an issue that, that you know, if you've got that thing sideways. Uh, but yep. you're right, uh, there are lots of companies that I mean, Navarre makes one, uh, Yak Gadget makes plates that fit different kayaks, and then you can have, usually they'll give you like three mounting places. You can have yep. a power pole thing and you can have um, um, your thing. We're actually going to do, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to do an installation where we bought some starboard 
and we're just going to make it like really sort of renegade and cut around and show you how you can make your own even with just a jigsaw and, and whatever right you can just make your own plate and then you can do whatever you want it's not that hard um but uh yeah that's definitely something um that if you really want to use that motor on that kayak at some point you might want to consider getting a small plate and just turning that angle straight so yeah. yeah i i think ultimately that's that's got to be the move that we got to do on that kayak because it's going to live on that kayak for paul for the remainder of forever <laughs> that that he has that kayak at least so by the time we make it commit to your yak dude we gotta we gotta fix that with that plate so we'll just hit up in the bar yep. figure it out. um all wow. right so i, I do want to talk about the rudder for a little bit if you guys mm -hmm. don't know so like when did that officially drop was that like a couple of weeks ago a couple of weeks ago yeah yeah, that okay. was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, last Thursday, I think, um, when we released it. Yeah, but we've been okay. working on that thing for a long time. That's probably yeah. been one of our, it's probably the second longest adapter we've spent time on. Wow. Um, but nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, some of the adapters take like we're we've been working on one adapter. We're going into the second year probably now <laughs> working yeah. on this thing. Whoa! Oh, um, wow. Yeah. So yeah, some of them, because they have to fit so many things and you have to take to so many things into consideration, right? Um, so some of them get really, really complicated. Uh, but um, yeah, that one we released about last Thursday. Um, and um, yeah, go, go, sorry, I'll, I, yeah. So there's a date, what was, I can <laughs> well, keep talking you, about it if you want. Yeah, I mean, you tell us about it. So I, I just installed it and like Kyle had to send me your install video because it wasn't live on YouTube. So like I right. had the, the unlisted video just so I could like put the thing together. Um, so just yeah. real quick, I'll give everybody like what I did as far as the build and then I'd be interested in hearing from you like why somebody might look at this option. Uh, but essentially you guys like on my Big Water 132, which does not have a rudder, <laughs> you can get a what's called a gudgeon, which is a little attachment that you put on the back of the boat and then you can attach a rudder to it and it works really well. Like I've already done a full day on the water with this thing. Uh, and then I went with your foot steering. So something we haven't pointed out yet. Uh, I think somebody earlier on in chat, I missed it, asked about this, like, how do you steer the thing? You've got hand steering. You've got like the, the actual little attachment pole that you could use. So you can use pole steering and then you can use yeah. foot steering and the foot steering is legit or you can just have it fixed position and steer with your own rudder which is what paul does with his 106 so that's pretty interesting i went with uh, your new <laughs> rudder attachment which you'll talk about in a second and then i went with your uh foot pedal steering which if you guys have not seen folks doing this in kayaks it's freaking cool we saw it the first time we saw it was jeff little um is it the little stuff paul is this the channel little, little things yeah the little things I was yeah. which one. specifically the little things or the little stuff. Go subscribe to both. Uh, but, but yeah, it's a great channel. The dude does a lot of cool stuff. He works with the keto Torquito a lot. Uh, and yeah, we tested out his uh crescent light tackle with foot steering. So I was on board for that. And I'm happy that I picked it up for yours too, because it's really, really nice. But anyway, so this new product, right? So it, it, talk to us a yeah. little bit about what this is. Right. So yeah. I think the first rudder we ever put this thing on was on a Hobie twist and stow rudder, and we still have that adapter, right? So mm -hmm. I've always loved the, the whole rudder, motorized rudder idea. I think that's one of the best places for it to be um, because you can steer really well. It works really well, right? So in, in, in the, like the twist and stow on the Hobies, the steering gets really heavy um, if you're on the higher speeds. So you actually have to kind of slow down a little bit if you want to make sharp turns, right? Mm -hmm. um, but um, from there, so that, that was one of our first five sort of adapters we released. And then very quickly, we um, worked with Viking uh, and um, sort of came up with an adapter for Viking kayaks on the rudder. Uh, they were early on to sort of adopt that. Uh, then we went on and made our own, but we were taking, we were buying rudders off the shelf and, and literally just putting them in the motor um so the rudders weren't really made to be motorized um so then we'd always wanted our own we, like, we sort of wanted a rudder that was supposed to have a motor on it right mm -hmm. so it's heavy so it drops down it's it's got nice uh smooth pull and uh, and sort of drop uh functions it, it addresses the cable issue right because on the rudder the cable is always weird like it's always hanging around somewhere right yeah um so with this rudder you've got a place for the cable to actually run across and come into your kayak 
without getting in the way of your lines and without getting in the way of your steering. Yeah. Um, and then because now you have a motor on your rudder, you want to be able to get that rudder out of there just quickly, right? You don't want to have to take things apart, take, take steering lines apart, all of that, right? So quick release pin and the whole rudder just comes out with the motor and then you throw it in your car or take it home, right? Yeah, so, um, cool. so all of those little, little items that went in there. And then um, what I've always found really annoying is you know, pulling in lines and running lines and, and foot steering, hand steering, all the stuff. It works really well on these kayaks that are made for it. But if your kayak wasn't made to have a foot steering or, or a hand steering, um, then it's really tough, right? It's really tough to run lines, tubes. You got to flare the yeah. bottoms. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a project, right? <laughs> yeah. So I really wanted a, a rudder that, that you could turn uh, like our pole steering because that's definitely my favorite way of steering these things. First of all, you mm. get so much leverage, right? Um, so steering is so easy. And then the weight of that pole itself typically keeps the motor in line. So if you want to adjust a little bit, all you have to do is just move that that pole and the weight of the pole and the friction of it with the kayak basically keeps it in place. So I thought if you could make a rudder that you could use that and have that pole steering feature, that's that's amazing because that just makes it so easy. You can put that on any kayak now. Yeah. Uh, no lines, no foot steering, no hand steering, no uh, Kevlar line, stainless steel lines, all of that's out the door, right? Yeah. Uh, all you need is like a brush handle or a broomstick or whatever plug in you're done right yeah. um so while we were building it we realized what we could actually do is have both options on the same rudder um so you could actually put both of those little steering mechanisms and you could attach them to the to the rudder and you can literally if you wanted to you can have both options so if you That's wanted crazy. to have a pole steering i don't know why you do that but we're like we're gonna we're doing it because we can so yeah. so you know you can you can sort of do it with both options so yeah, yeah. No, it, it is it is pretty crazy. So what uh, we're getting into, you guys here, is Bixby makes this attachment for how you want to steer that you can attach to any of these motor attachments, and then it's just going to turn that motor for you. So like I have the foot steering, so it's just this little like V shape, and then you just tie off your line that goes to your your foot steering up front, uh, and then press your foot forward to the right. You go right, left, you go left. Right, it's super easy. Uh, or vice versa, whatever. I know what it is on the water. Uh, but yeah, super easy to use. And then like that same attachment could be for the pole use or it could be for hand steering. So I thought that was super clever and interesting. And I also like, I don't know if you mentioned this, but the way this rudder comes up, when you pull the rudder up, so you want it, you know, just in the up position in super shallow water conditions. First of all, if you bump into stuff, it'll just move up. But in, in the shallow water, if you don't want to like have the motor hit anything, you got a, a, a an attachment where you can just pull that and get that thing up. It slides up and then it pulls forward. It's so cool. So like it doesn't really stick out that far from the back of the boat. Uh, and then right. somebody somebody asked this earlier when and we had this issue. And because we we are big, dumb, aggressively average anglers, we didn't figure it out at the time. But you mentioned it. You can pull a pin and just detach the motor, the battery, the whole dang thing and just like walk yeah. off with it. So when launching yeah. a kayak, like when when taking it off my truck and launching it and then putting it back on my truck, like highly recommend you guys, you can just detach it. You just take it off. You save some weight and yeah. uh, it gets in the way when you're like trying to move the kayak. Yeah. So it's nice yeah. to take And it at off. some point that line will come off and you'll drop something. <laughs> and if I tell you, man, if I tell you how many motors we get in our warehouse that Better were drop. picked off the side of the highway, yeah. You'd be really, really surprised. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. You don't have to drive with it, right? So you take it off, put it in your vehicle, yeah. and then you just you drive down the road. Because if it's just hanging off the back of your boat, and the back of your boat's off the back of your truck, it's just bouncing. It's going to bounce, not, yeah. And then it was, it's not good. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that is, uh, so when we go back to the water <laughs> again the next time, Paul, we're going to have to actually take yeah. the motor off. 100%. First time. So we we tried to no we've take had it. I'm not joking man we've had we've had motors come in mini motors come in with highway rash and stuff on them <laughs> like, <laughs> plastic like, dude, 
why would you put that on your kayak and drive Bro, around? And is there a reason you drove that behind your truck for so long? Bro, you yeah. almost had you almost had ours at the shop because we were filming. We were trying to like unload it. And Paul was like, all right, I'm trying, I'm trying not to put this on the ground, but we were just scraping it. I was like, <laughs> no. So yeah, now we know just detach the whole dang thing until you get to the water. Yeah, no, I, I think <laughs> you know, people people beat kayaks up because they take such a good beating, right? Yeah. Uh, but not everything that goes on your kayak takes as much of a beating. So you got to right. <laughs> take Be your nice cameras, your, your, motor. <laughs> your yeah. cameras, your fish finders and your stuff off when you're doing 80 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, I was always the worst with my pedals, like the fins on the Hobie. I just run them into everything. Like forget that the drive it was, was in. The ru- it was the rudder. <laughs> the rudder too, just scraping the rudder. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, how man. many times did I like, get home and realize, like, yeah, the rudder was down the whole time? That rudder I never just, even yeah. took it. Like, what we're dragging on yeah. the ground. Uh, real quick, shout out to Chris Shu, my man. Chris, we sent you a box. Just, I, I hope you got it by now. Or, Paul, did you just ship that out? I think it just went out. It just, Chris, you got a gifty gift coming your way, brother. So, thank you so much for gifting five memberships. Uh, it looks like. Baby Huey, Julie Rousseau. I can see who gets them now. Julie Rousseau, Sly Fox got one nice. Pi Square, Jeffrey Huff, who just won a prize on one of our last uh, events. So welcome to the membership via Chris Shu. Thank you, man. That's awesome. Always love to see that. All right. Uh, we got any other hard-hitting questions that we wanted to throw out there? I saw, um, was it Craig? Craig was asking about battery storage. I think Kyle took care of them in the comments here. So Craig, if you're if you still want another explanation, we can we can definitely hit you with that as well. Uh, Paul, we got any other of the hard hitting ones though? I think we hit like our builds pretty good. The new product, for sure. Which I'm excited about. I I had so much fun with that the other day on the water. It was awesome. <coughs> there is some discussion about, about oh, hull speed and how fast you go and so on. Mm, um, yeah. You know, so we can we can I don't think you can go on about forever about that but just sort of a quick um because that's a very common question people ask right yeah um so you are almost always limited not almost i mean you're limited by your hull speed right so the hull speed is how fast a watercraft can go um given its hull design and blah blah there's a really complicated equation you can do the math um but but yeah at the end of the day most of these big fishing kayaks won't go above four four point four point five miles an hour they really mm. won't so so you'll notice like you'll get in the kayak and you'll put the motor on and we've done this so many times we put multiple motors on uh all excited thinking uh, we actually put three motors on a paddleboard and we were so <laughs> excited there's a video of it on there with the, with the blow up thing and, and we were yeah. doing a promo for our battery um we put a blow up uh um uh, uh, leprechaun on this thing and we had three motors on it we thought we're just gonna like go down the you know we should be three motors but you yeah. don't you really don't go a lot faster you make a lot more water move right mm-hmm. um so it looks a lot more chaotic your wake looks much bigger but if you actually measure your speed you usually top off at where the kayak's hull speed is um unless you start really lifting the kayak out of the water right and that's why the yeah. longer kayaks are so much faster um even if they're much heavier um yeah. so you know like i've been out with my friend you know he's way taller than me uh way heavier than me but he's on a, a double tandem hobie mirage i'm on a tiny little sport which is a 10 foot kayak he's about four foot longer than mine and much heavier he just crushes me like he's in the mid <laughs> speed and he's just going and i'm full yeah. speed and i'm trying to pedal and I, i'm not able to catch up to him so um <laughs> So there is that. That's that's really yeah. a thing. So you know, just because it's bigger, it doesn't mean it's going to go faster, right? Yeah. Um, great, but yeah, great so that's point. that's one question um, that that kept coming up on the side there. Uh, and, and then I and keep seeing people talk about the the battery life thing there. Um, battery life yeah, and storage. Answer, yeah. So that's that's so, what uh, Craig was bringing up here in the chat. Yeah. yeah um, so yeah. that's what Kyle was talking about. So yeah, lithium ion, a little different approach to things. So like how for everybody how are we storing that to keep that thing healthy and not have any issues yeah so the lithium lithium ions you you sort of want it between 50 to so, so it's about two-thirds full if you really want to store it but you should still keep an eye on it and, and just mm. sort of top it off a little bit once every that's it every eight months every year or whatever um it doesn't matter as much at all um that's why they're so much more desirable because it doesn't matter how you store them they're happy being stored either way uh, yeah. empty full um 
there are people who go to great lengths to store these things in the most uh, pristine manner possible. It'll make a slight difference in the longevity of how long your battery will last. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, um, that's like shaving your hair so you can shake, shaving your leg hairs and go faster on a bike. Like it's, doesn't have to be that extreme, right? So, <laughs> you're not getting that sure. much like for what you're giving up. Yeah. You're not yeah. getting that much more life. Like so typically the batteries are made really well. The, the yeah. battery management systems are really well uh, tuned. So they'll, they'll take care of the batteries. Uh, the one thing you don't want to do is they'll just die on you. So um, Wait, say that again? What, yeah, what don't I want to do? You don't, you don't, you don't want to store them completely empty. So you don't, you okay. don't want to put a drain battery in your closet for four months. Yeah. Um, because you might come back to a battery that's just completely shut itself off for safety and it just yeah. won't come back to life. So, um, and it's not dead. It's just shut off and, and it just won't come back. All so, I can think of is wake me up, wake me up. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you try and start yeah. it up. It doesn't start up. It's just wake it me up. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and you cannot trickle charge them. Yeah, you can't trickle charge them. There's, they're not like lead acid batteries where you can put it on a charger and have it trickle charge. Because once they're full, they just shut off. They won't accept any more electricity. So, Got And it. by full, okay. is that like a 80%? Or no, full 200? meaning like when it's completely full and, and your charger has now shut off, mm. you can't just leave it on that charger. That charger won't come back up. Yep. Got it. Here's another one. What about the yeah. heat? Any what about issues heat? in the heat? Yeah. Yeah, so heat, you don't. So one thing we have seen are, are people who store them outside in the sun, like constant, like all the time. Yeah, and so that that weird. really degrades. Yeah, that really degrades the battery. That that really degrades the battery. So you know you don't want to be storing these things like in direct sun for the entire day. Um, you know they're they're made to be outdoors, of course, but then you know that's going to take away from their longevity. So. Um, yeah, I, I'm cringing just thinking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where will I store this? On my deck, and then just walk yeah. away. Like I'm like, oh, it's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm. Mean, you know, we've had that, and and it's literally like, like it's a little disappointing, but there's not much we can do either. I mean, there's nature has a way of of breaking things back to its cycle. So <laughs> and making dinosaurs for sure. Yeah, I don't even like leaving yeah. my kayak outside, and <laughs> like it's yeah, I'm getting I'm getting outside. Like, oh, like my whole soul is <laughs> crumpling inside of itself. I, I know people do. Like I'm not trying to knock you. If that's if that's what you do, it's cool. It's cool. It's fine. Uh, yeah. I just is it ugh. <laughs> is it <laughs> for them? It's fine. It's not fine for me. I'm just saying. <laughs> Have you seen those videos where they're like how to make people uncomfortable, and it's a guy like. He fills up a bowl of cereal and just keeps pouring the milk right out of the bowl. Oh. And, like spirits all the toothpaste out of the just to like that's and then you should have a guy just counter a batter <laughs> a, a Bixby battery sizzling on a like on, on the sidewalk like I mean, on the, hood, yeah. on the like, hood of the truck. God, <laughs> awful. All right, well, real quick before cool. we go to our what we call the slow rolling thunder part of the show where we have some fun questions for you. Uh, I just want to know if there's anything else that you wanted to address or any any new products coming out or anything people should be aware of from Bixby. Anything you should be aware of? What do I tell you? We have, well, we, you know, we do sell, we have, I have one here just in case my phone died. Oh, uh, yeah. We do sell um, these um, 12 volt, 5 volt batteries. Then we just came up with these actually a couple of weeks ago as well. So this is, we've had this, but this is sort of the new edition of it. It's got, uh, you know, indicators. Oh, nice. It's um yeah it's nice color and um it, it puts out a lot more power now so you can put, use it for pumps and stuff so you know we are slowly getting into that battery uh power storage uh as well um but sort of a, on, on a limited scale compared to our motors um we've got a few adapters in the works um that we've been working on some we've been more successful with than others um uh yeah that's that's all i can tell you for now just so, stay tuned. So uh, I heard about the battery. Kyle mentioned the battery to us. Uh, what, yeah. what you just showed. So what can yeah. I what can I run off of that? What's like the? Uh, do you have USB on that? Like what are we looking at? Yeah. So on this we've got here's the camera. So we have a USB. So waterproof USB nice. on there, um, like built in, and it's a fast fast USB charger. So it'll charge the phone okay. in like an hour. Um, nice. And then we've got a yeah we've got a twelve volt out. So and that's our. 12 volt connector that's on um on most of our batteries and uh yeah so you can run uh one of the really cool things you can run with this uh on, on our end anyway are the pumps for the paddle boards 
because those paddleboard pumps have a lot of uh, they take a lot of amp, right? Yeah. Uh, so you can't you got to hook them up to a car battery or a car or something. Um, so that that's one of the big ones to run on this, aside from phones and charges and stuff. And then of course fish finders, right? So you can run a fish finder off this for about seven hours. Um, but okay. I realize now people have these huge fish finders and all these control centers and stuff. Yeah. This is not for that, definitely. Yeah. So this is for your sort of smaller seven inch, uh, nine inch, maybe Laurent's and, uh, and that's about it. Um, Gosh. which is still a lot of fish finder for a kayak, I think, but, <laughs> oh yeah, but, uh, but there are like crazy setups now. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's what, you know, so, and it's truly waterproof. It'll, it'll blow up like four paddle boards with one charge. Um, you can do solar charging on it. Um, so, you know, you, you're not sort of stuck to your car now, if you want to, um, if yeah. you want to blow up paddle board. So, yeah. That's cool. How, how much does that run? What are people? These run at? for one fifty. One fifty now. One fifty. Okay. One fifty. Yeah. So that comes with yeah. uh, an, an extension cable that you can turn on and off. So if you did hook it up to lights or um, or fish finder or whatever, there's a uh, waterproof on and on switch on the cable. That comes with a cigarette lighter adapter, so you can plug in all the pumps and everything else that has cigarette lighter adapter on it. Um, and the USB is built in, obviously. So. That's cool. I like that. How much does it weigh? Uh, two point one, I think. It's about two pounds. That's all. Awesome. It's anodized. It's got anodized aluminum though for the body. So it's there's a video that will come out at some point where we run this thing over with a car. I shouldn't even say that, should I? No. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh it's that. I'm it? terrible at this. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> terrible. At this. It's all You're good. You're a great uh, podcast host, though. You yeah, give away all your secrets. It's perfect. Yeah. It's it's what the oh, people no, want. Funny. Uh, so Canadian I guess dealer it says Canadian yeah. dealer. Okay, I got a good news for that. We're we're uh, we're opening up uh, fulfillment in Canada. So to the to to my fellow Canadian up there, um, um, I'm Canadian by the way. Um, yeah, we didn't but, get into yeah, that so on the show. We're, you're yeah, that's from right. Toronto, <laughs> like yeah, that's where you yeah, grew yeah. up. Yeah, um, but um, yeah, we'll be fulfilling from Canada as well soon so um nice. so no more shipping free shipping within canada so that is awesome that is so we yeah. got a lot of canadian yeah, yeah. friends in the house uh we get a lot of canadian yeah. folks in here so that'll be good news cool. for them love to hear it yeah. all right so with all that aside all the secrets dropped you know all that good <laughs> stuff let's get into what we call slow rolling thunder so these are like more just for fun questions uh but you get to go first on these and then paul and i'll answer on each of these two paul you want to go with that first one yeah all right. So what is something that you worry about as an adult that you never would have worried about like for a second as like a college age kid? <laughs> Which is technically an adult, by the way. Dude, like every, well, what, no, what, what you, you and I both about? know that a 21 year old. I was rather mature. I was. You okay. were not. Stop it. <laughs> Okay, so what 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 is it that I worry about now that I didn't worry about then? I'll give you like yeah. an example. One that I saw today was somebody was talking about how they were they would just like drink a four loco, like oh I'll have maybe I'll have four. I don't know. And like you weren't thinking like, like how many calories are in this. And now I'm yeah. like oh that's too much sugar. Ooh <laughs> ah ew like that is something like for no <laughs> trees in my front yard. I love my trees. I planted them with my yeah. own bare hands when my kids were born. They each it's have one. Lands. I love my trees <laughs> nice. and I worry about them way too yeah. much. Would never yeah. have even thought about a deciduous forest <laughs> so good. as a college age kid. <laughs> I worry about like my cup of coffee in the morning now what are you talking about? Hungry. like yeah <laughs> like when i'm right. traveling now i'm like oh are they gonna have like good coffee like what like what if <laughs> what if have like the shower milk? pressure is not enough yeah are you joking <laughs> <It's power pressure. laughs> Ho hotel coffee dude it's like yeah, it's you like, never you're like i'm at a hotel they have co i don't care what it is i'm drinking it yeah. out of the the room keurig that's what it is you use the that. room keurig do you do that no, yeah. I don't. I'm oh. an adult now, but when I was a not adult, <laughs> I definitely did. And I, I've never thought about it until <laughs> now. I go to a hotel now, I'm like, don't touch that thing. Don't even look at it. <laughs> yeah, that thing is just disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Germs. That's what it uh, is. <laughs> yes. No, I worry about everything now. So oh, funny. 
it's Dude, true. It's like so funny. I wouldn't worry about my diet until I gained like 15 pounds. I'd be like, huh, <laughs> yeah. maybe I should lay off the entire blocks of cheese before bed. <laughs> and then, yeah. like, yeah. and then, yeah. now I'm like, bed. can yeah. I have a slice of cheese? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sure. Every, yeah. Everything is scarier. That's that's the reality of it. Like yes. you had yeah. you had zero fears and zero cares in college, and now you oh, have all God. those fears. Sure. <laughs> that's there, what it comes. Yeah, to. that's right. All right. Funny. So next one, Human, are you on TikTok? Do you do you tick the talk at all? No, no, no. Okay. I what don't... about Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, any of those? I can't. I, I don't know how to use any of that stuff, man. I love no. this. I, I know, like I don't. I'm happy for you. For one, I, I mean, Kyle, First I'm of sure all. Kyle is laughing as he's watching. He's like laughing. I don't honestly know. Like, uh, my only vice is YouTube Shorts. That's like that's all I do. Just because I like seeing people get hurt, and YouTube feeds it to me all the time. <laughs> like you're just doing dumb shit and getting hurt. I'm like that's that's my only vice. And comedy. That's all I do. Just people my kind of guy banging their heads. I like it. Yeah. Just, so that's, that's on my that, only vice. I don't know how on to that use that Instagram note. properly. No, yeah. you're perfect. So you get YouTube shorts. So on that note, you know how, like, some accounts, they're there to make just, like, very comforting content. So, like, yeah. one of them would be, satisfying. like, well, yes, yeah, very sad. Yeah. It's very satisfying. So, like, right. my wife would watch, like, the zit popping oh, videos. Gross. and I, But that's, like, she's no. relaxed by that, right? And then Ew. there's, like, the, the guy who's, like, squishing things, like, with me mechanical. I love squisher, that. I was going to oh, say. Where yeah, he's, yeah. like, oh, I'm yeah. going to squish, like, this toy or these crayons love or, that. like, you All know, right. whatever. All there's right. those. What else did I write down? Oh, the traveling ones where it's, like, showing you some, like, beautiful piece of scenery or something. Or there's the... uh Cooking. I like the car ones are pretty cool where it's like it's just like yeah, a slow reveal of like or when someone's like cleaning something like there's a guy who cleans like um antique cigarette lighters and stuff and he oh, like yeah. washes them oh, up, yeah, yeah. Like, or like yeah. the guy who cleans like the Nintendos that so I, the Nintendo cleaning one or people building things uh like right. I find that satisfying and for no reason I'll watch a nine minute video of a guy like <laughs> brushing off a lighter like oh, okay yeah. dope you made cool. this piece of like hunk of dirt look like you know it was brand new again yeah. so i would say what you know eight minute what's like the longest uh you know reel that she'll watch for no reason and then be like oh why did why did i just watch Dude, it that was I so satisfying no no attention span for that at all none there's like, not I one am, that will I get you they built the go, thing go, 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 go. <laughs> you are the doom <laughs> scroller <laughs> Yeah, no, he's like, going for the record, crazy. dude. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna so, find the bottom. I'll, I'll don't like, run out eventually. See, <laughs> uh, I see like a video coming where I know this dude's gonna get hurt, like at some point, because you yeah. see he's doing something stupid. And I look at the 100%. bottom. It's like, oh man, it's gonna be 48 seconds. I wonder where he gets hurt in this. So I start scrolling until I see bang his head. And oh, I'm like, no. here we go. Boom. I do that. Next. <laughs> Boom. I gone. Next. I, I do that too. I like to flip to the last chapter of the book and just read that. That's Every generally time I how see I one that says part one, I'm like, son of a. Skip to part seven. No, the worst is when it's like actually 20 parts. <laughs> it's yeah. like broken up. Oh, I, I love I love how unhinged accounts on TikTok are where they have everything as a part two. There is no yeah. part one and there is that. no part more. We don't need that. <laughs> how about, okay, so uh, Kyle Montgomery says the guy's building the forest. Uh, a house out of clay. That's like, yeah, dude. They, oh my god, that was such a YouTube hack. Those guys made so that much money, insane. And they were that just doing that insane. for funsies. They weren't. Yeah. There's a guy who chops. There's a guy who chops wood uh, Thor, with his axe. You found Thorin. <laughs> yeah, dude, that dude. <laughs> what, what an what inspiration to all men. <laughs> <laughs> what an inspiration to all people. <laughs> <laughs> to all people. Yeah. To all. <laughs> Strong, lumber them lumber, yeah. <laughs> lumber jams uh, it'll be lumber jams yeah. you, you so stop there. it that's so good all go. right so yeah, you just like to watch people get hurt yeah. on the internet i like that it's good dude i, I love right. that i remember jackass man that was my favorite stuff back in the day there you go yeah. i like watching people get hurt it's fun all right well <laughs> i just remember the bee bikini made out of bumblebees the bee bikini <laughs> that was insane. All right. Uh, so someone comes, you're just at home, you're probably alone, uh, and you're maybe watch TV, you're having a you're having stuff a time. 
and so, and you hear a knock on the door or someone rings your doorbell what's your what's your instinct like what's the first thing not what do you actually do but like what's the first thing that goes through your head are you like oh god or are you like <laughs> no i'm not here or are you like hello alan good to see you again <laughs> social or antisocial? Oh, definitely antisocial. i just don't like <laughs> yes yes yeah 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 you're like, like you're like i'm not like, going oh, unless they can guy. see me in the window yeah, i'm not like, gonna answer that they're gonna yeah knock, yeah and like, knock, oh, what? And knock. Why? why are you here like that's the word that goes through my head <laughs> why <laughs> why like, dude, it's the same thing i have when my phone dings with a message like, why why what do you want <laughs> there's no way you're gonna hear anything nice from me why 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. wow so that's a good answer. Why? I for in my neighborhood, it's always uh, either the football team, the soccer team, oh my God. or something coming to try and get some of my money. They just want my cans or my cash. That's okay, here, here's a life hack: if you want them never to come back, stand at your door, like at the window part of your door. Yeah. Stare at them. Do not move. Do not <laughs> open the door. Just dead ass. <laughs> just wait until they silence is a weapon. <laughs> just, just stare. <laughs> Do not move. Oh my god. They'll never come back again. I'm just saying. Or you so, can just go mm, mm, like that. Oh, yeah. that would be <laughs> horrifying. I don't know what, that would be. what is then all of a sudden you're mean? staring at a cop? Um, yeah, <laughs> it's my property. I do what I want. <laughs> all right, last one, last one, and then I'm okay. out of here. Is it worth it to stay up on like young kid lingo? For example, skibbity or giat or all the new stuff that kids are saying. Is it worth it trying to keep up and trying to understand no. what the hell is going on? Or are we have we pulled the ripcord yet? Because I'm still interested. I'm out. No, I there is no new lingo after we were cool nothing else is cool oh come so, on <laughs> you don't think I have we're chaz said, said riz he said riz is a cool i think riz is gonna stick around riz will be like a new common word my kids will be saying it i don't think it's gonna go away dude i'm some ancient i don't even know what riz, i don't even know what you're talking you don't about. even know what that is i feel like it's, everyone's so, know, it's charisma riz yeah, you got you got more, charisma yeah but it's a little more than that right. it's deeper than that yeah now i i'm like dude i'm way old i don't know like i have two teenage kids i have no <laughs> I idea what, that, what they're that's saying that's why i'm asking that's you like, should like so that's yeah. why i'm wondering like do you feel like you need to be no in, i've done it loop. mistakenly a couple of times and they put me in my place very quickly like that don't embarrass us shut up don't, don't. <laughs> oh, damn. very quickly it's like that's <laughs> that vocabulary does not belong in your lexicon say it again. yes <laughs> yeah do not say that don't use that word again Dude, I'm. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh God, this stream is bussing. <laughs> what is no printer? I don't know I'm, what no printer just is. Just kidding. That's I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. Well, you know what? We had a blast. We appreciate you so much for being on the show. Thanks man. for having me, guys. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Fun. You you dropped a lot of cool new things that people should be aware of, and maybe some hints at some secret new projects and things coming up. So I I think yep. we helped the folks out a lot. Also, we answered some technical questions. Yo, we we did the gamut. So uh, before we bail out with you, Human, is there like anywhere people should be looking for Bixby products in particular? Anywhere we you want us to send them after the show? Yeah, just send them straight to our website. And that'd be awesome. Yeah, go check out. We, we try and be as informative as possible. Try to put everything into video format and make it easy for people to understand the product. Um, working on a new website coming out soon, being nicer and easier to navigate and, and all of that. Uh, we've got a really cool marketing team. You guys know Kyle already. And, and um, yeah, they're, they're all about getting sort of getting people educated about the product. So, um, yeah. And then we're, we've got, um, you know, our dealer list is growing. So, uh, hopefully people will be more and more able to get on to their local dealer and see and feel and try the product before they buy it. That'll be really cool. So 
Awesome. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for your time and being on the show, brother. And uh, yeah, we'll maybe we'll chat for a second after we hop off here. But hey, you guys in yeah. chat, we appreciate you for staying on the show with us and hanging out. Uh, we will be back again next Wednesday with another live. So join us then and uh, stay tuned members. I know we got like five new members tonight. So uh, new members and everybody else that's uh, in our membership crew will be doing a members only live, which is April yeah. Ninth, I date. think. Do we? Is it April 9th? Yep, that's Probably. the one. <laughs> we'll confirm next week, April 9th. It's like the day before my birthday. Remember, we talked about this last time. We did. Uh, all right, so we will be doing that, and then we'll also be live on the 10th. So it'll be fun, but yeah, we'll be back next Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate y'all. Chaz takes out of here. Those Thanks, everyone. Tickets.